Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Dexter Season 7 Episode 6. My computer crashed. That's not a part of the episode. My computer crashed and I lost my editing software. So basically I'm just gonna have to do this one with saying a lot of uh and uh ums and stuff like that, which I would normally edit out. Uh, I say them anyway, so that maybe it really doesn't matter. Uh, also I usually say there you go. Also I usually uh, have notes. And this time I'm not going to do that because it is late because I got out of work and I wanted to at least just get something up on YouTube quick enough. So, uh, yeah, so bear with me with this one. I'll try to have my editing software up next week. But anyway, episode six, we are at the halfway point of uh, season seven and it's been a strong first half. And um, this episode, I liked how it felt like we're not meandering, like new storylines are still being set up or they're being put into motion. And other storylines that were put on the back burner aren't left completely off screen, like Isaac. That's still in motion. Like, everything is moving. And you can feel all these things are just crushing in. And it's gonna, you know, kind of just like burst asunder by the time we get to the second half. So, yeah, and speaking of the second half of the season, we are a season and a half away from the end of the series. And nothing kind of made me feel that way in this episode more than Batista, who was talking about buying a, you know, buying a restaurant and retiring and whatever. There was a sense of, even though it could have been just like a throwaway thing, and some people maybe looked at it as, you know, just kind of like, oh, why do we have to hear this? It doesn't matter. It's like, well, if he's thinking about retiring, you know, it does matter because the show is ending. So he may be leaving at the end of the season or maybe something will happen or he might get killed off. It's just there is a sense of finality to it. Like when that if that would have happened, you know, in earlier seasons, we would have just been like or whatever. But, you know, the show is ending soon, so that has more weight to it now than it normally would. And that's definitely a uh, a plus as far as ending the show goes. And um as far as La Guerta and the Bay Harbor Butcher stuff, that didn't necessarily move forward that much only in the sense that we got to check off jordan chase off the list of things for deb to find out about and uh, i like how deb was able to like swat laguerta's you know story away again deflected she's only gonna be able to deflect this stuff for so long but uh she deflected it away from now and once again so we basically we haven't really had much discussion with deb and dexter on rudy just a little bit but that's a big one. Uh, we haven't had much discussion at all with Dokes, which is kind of ridiculous. They really should get into it. But I guess they will as it, as um, the Butcher stuff starts to take over. Haven't really gotten to Miguel Prado, but we've checked off Trinity. We've checked off Jordan Chase and Lumen. And now we've checked off, um, and obviously Travis. So, yeah, they're going down the line. And uh, I'm expecting to hear, I guess, from, about Miguel Prado at some point, maybe, in the second half. I don't know how, but they seem to be going, like I said, going down the line doing that. And, um, I like how when we got to the scene with Deb and Dextra, Dextra, Dextra? Dexter, uh, I'm from New York, but I'm not that bad. Um, she, it was like he already told her, and it was just like kind of thrown, like, yeah, yeah, look, all right, he told her, you know, we, we didn't even have to see it, because that's the kind of season it's been, and that's, uh, that's a good thing. Okay, moving on to Isaac, who, like I said, was off... Well, I thought was going to be completely off-screen. I loved seeing him. He was in two scenes this week. I don't know how the hell he got a cell phone in the uh, jail yard. That just, like, nearly, like, torpedoed the entire scene. I don't know if he took it off the Colombian or what. Or what. Um, but that was a great scene. It just, it just basically let us, you know, reminded us again that Isaac really is going to be an issue to take out. And um, it got me wondering how I kind of want Dexter to take out Isaac. Do you want just like a, a big like fight to the... Because it's not going to be... I don't think it's going to be a normal on the table kind of death. It's going to have to be... It's going to have to be kind of like a chess match. Uh, but a chess match that he's also going to have to win with his fists. I hope so. I hope at least that's how they go. That he has to outsmart him and then beat him uh, fair and square. But... Um, Anyway, then moving on to Quinn, which allows Isaac to get back into the swing of things, basically, because Quinn screwed up, 
and um, they're going to use his screw-up to get Isaac out of jail. Which, again, you could say it's like convoluted and everything, but the Quinn and the stripper that he likes was set up early on enough that him not wanting her to get sent away, and I like that they said they weren't going to kill her, they were just going to send her away somewhere else where she'd probably kill herself. Um, so, you know, they used that to get to Quinn, and they used his backstory to get to him, and all of those things combined will get Isaac out of jail. So, yeah, it's a little convoluted, but it feels much more effortless than the show's been in the past, where, the, you know, they, or it feels like, you know, they did put effort into it this time, at least. Um, and a side story that I really wasn't looking forward to with Quinn seems to not necessarily be resolved, but it just, it got to its point right away. It'll get Isaac out of jail, that's it. And whatever continues on here with Quinn is just not going to get any better. And, um... You know, that's more drama. That's a good thing. So uh, I like what's going on with that. I'm trying to think if there's something else before I get to the Hannah stuff. Oh, yeah. The uh, the new guy. I forget his name. The one that's dating uh, Deb. I like how he inadvertently now creates another problem for Dexter this season. Where he's got Isaac, Deb, Hannah, LaGuerta, and now this guy. This guy is innocent. LaGuerta is innocent. You know, Hannah's not. Isaac's not. And Deb is stuck in the middle with Dexter. So there's a lot of stuff, crazy stuff going on. And, um, of course, it's going to hurt Deb even more now because she's going to get involved with this guy like she always does, gets involved and gets hurt, and um, which somehow relates to the plot of the season. Uh, until Quinn, of course. No, that related to. Anyway, never mind. Um... All right, yeah, as far as Hannah goes, I figured we were going to get Dexter, you know, having sex with her. And I figured we were going to get Dexter to eventually kill her. What I didn't think is they'd do it the way they did, probably because I didn't really like the way they did it. Um, I liked that it happened fast. I thought for a second, wow, they were going to kill her off right away, which... Uh, I didn't know if I would have been, if I would have liked that or not. I wasn't sure. And, um, after it was all said and done, he just started, you know, having sex with her on the table. That, I mean, I get the symbolism and everything like that, and, uh, and I get certainly why he, uh, went for it. Um, and of course it just creates even more of a problem that he's just, you know, shacking up with a known killer now. It's basically, it is basically Lila all over again, except Hannah is more calculating and more intelligent, uh, and better at hiding her, uh, her crazy. And I like how he justified it in his uh, in his head, saying like, "Well, you know, she'd uh, she'd get off anyway, so you know, it doesn't matter if I try to take her out." But um, it did happen a little too. It was a little too rushed and a little too like, "All right," for the ending of the episode, which brought for me brought it down just a little bit because it made my eyes roll. You know, it was kind of like, "Okay, fine," but still, it isn't meandering. It creates <laughs> it creates another problem. And like I said, everything seems to be moving forward really well. This first half of this season has been fantastic. And the second half, this is what they got to do. Last season, I thought the first half was actually pretty good. Uh, I think the Nebraska episode from last season was episode 7, which is where this season just, you know, crashed and burned. I think it was. So hopefully, this season will not do the same. And there's so much going on that I think everything, I hope everything just comes together in a really, really great way. And, um, well, we'll see. All right, guys, I will uh, see you next week, hopefully with some editing software. All right, later.